Danny, how does Arendt characterise the political realm as she thinks it ought to be? Well, her language is quite confusing because when she talks about politics, anyone who listens to news radio and Australian Parliament would have absolutely no idea what she's talking about. So she often has in her mind the demos, the Greek demos, where free and equal citizens discuss what matters to them. So politics is the realm in which we exchange our ideas and together in this context of what she calls plurality, we come up with ideas about what we think, about what we want to do. It's the process of thinking together about the world. That's really what politics is, the process of thinking, talking and acting together about the world. So the idea of political life then is that we do not enact something which was laid down before us according to a template, because if we do that, we're just cogs in a machine. Well, to her, that's not politics, that's administration. And one of the criticisms that she had of contemporary or her contemporary politics is the idea that politics is about enacting what we already know to be the case is this for her an anathema of what the political life offers. When she spoke about politics, she really thought that that was the highest realm of what it was to be a human being, was to join with your equals in this disclosive process. I use disclosive as opposed to creative because she had a distinction between those two. When we created something, we had an idea in our mind of what we were creating. When we disclose, we bring something new into existence. So when she spoke about the political life, she actually thought that we were bringing something new into existence. So when I come into a political conversation with my free and equal others, I don't know what I'm going to say before I get there. It emerges in the space that comes up between us. Totalitarianism, as she understood it, had its greatest evil or it was most deleterious in the sense that it removed all space in which individual in community with others or in plurality with others was possible. So because there was a blueprint of the correct form of life, both in Nazism and in Stalinism, any person who came into existence simply had to be coordinated, as she liked to say, with this movement forward into the inevitable perfection of humanity. So there was no space in there for an individual to discover in the context of the world as it appeared to her or him, what it was to think about the world or to bring the world into existence because the world's ideal type had already been established in both cases. Perhaps we should look at how she stands in relation to other political thinkers. Let's take the 17th century English philosopher Thomas Hobbes, mm. who basically held that our sovereignty, our personal sovereignty, mm. depended more or less on getting other people out of mm. the way, mm. on not being dependent upon other people's will. How does her thought stand in relation to his? Well, it's a wonderful contrast concept because that notion of freedom, for Hobbes literally, uh, freedom in politics is an extension of freedom to be able to move, to be able to push obstacles, including other people out of our way. For Arendt, it couldn't have been more different. We only get to be free in relation to other free people or to free others. So the notion that there is an individual who gets to be autonomous by virtue of expressing some pre-existing will, that's not freedom to her. And what about the 18th century thinker Jean-Jacques Rousseau? Now, Rousseau certainly had a notion of the public realm, but for him the public realm was the republic into which we individuals should be subsumed. Right, so Rousseau then is on the other end of the spectrum of the individual. Freedom comes from the will of all or the general will rather than the will of the individual as it does for Hobbes. But there is a 
important qualitative difference between the mass as Arendt would have read Rousseau or the will of all and the plurality in which individuals still exist. They don't exist as the individuals that they would have been out of the context of others, but they have to remain as individuals. If the individual is simply subsumed in a new entity, which is the all or the republic, then freedom is similarly lost.